Locating is a combination of science, technique, and experience. This video will explain the technical principles and apply them to the skills required for basic underground locating. The most critical concept to acquire for underground locating is the principle of signal path. You must create a complete circuit for the transmitted signal to follow. This circuit depends on three components, the target utility, or metal conductor, the physical ground, or dirt, and the grounding device, or ground rod. Each of these components must be connected in order to form the circuit or signal path. When you are tracing a buried utility, the transmitter sends a signal through the target conductor. The far end of the target conductor is connected to the ground, or grounding point. The signal then returns through the dirt, back to the ground rod, and the black lead of the transmitter. The signal creates an electromagnetic field around the target conductor. The receiver detects this field, allowing you to trace the path of the conductor. All locating signals use the soil for the return path of the locating circuit. There are three ways to introduce the signal onto the target facility. The first is by directly connecting the red lead of the transmitter to the target facility and the black lead to a ground rod placed in the earth. The second is the clamp or dynacoupler method. The third is the induction method. This method uses the internal antenna of the transmitter to generate a magnetic field onto the conductor with no physical connection. Direct connection to the target facility is the most accurate method for utility locating. So we will concentrate on this method for this training session. The transmitter offers several different frequencies, 577 hertz, 1 kilohertz, 8 kilohertz, 33 kilohertz, 82 kilohertz, and 200 kilohertz. Using the direct connect method allows you to determine the quality of the signal path circuit. This information can help you choose the best frequency to apply to the target conductor. Connect the transmitter to the target conductor and measure the quality of the signal path circuit by pressing the ohm key on the transmitter. A flag will appear in the lower left side of the display indicating that the transmitter is in ohms mode. The resistance of the tracing circuit will be displayed. Based on the quality or resistance of the signal path, you can choose the optimum frequency for your application. Here is a chart you can use for selecting the optimum frequency. In the previous example, the resistance of the signal path was 1K. Based on the reference chart, the optimum frequency for this locate would be 577 Hz. You should always select the lowest frequency applicable to the resistance of the signal path. Using the lowest frequency is good practice because the lower the frequency, the less chance of bleed over signal to adjacent facilities. If the resistance of the signal path is greater than 10K, or if the ohmmeter displays OL, this could be an indication of an open line or that the return path through the ground is very marginal or non-existent. You should attempt to improve the condition of the signal path. Refer to the section Advanced Application Techniques for suggestions on how to improve your ground. When using the Direct Connect method, the transmitter current level will alternately flash with the selected frequency on the display. Make a mental note of the transmitter current level before you start locating the target path. To help verify the target path, compare the transmitter current level to the current measured by the receiver on a suspected target conductor. If low is flashing alternately with the frequency, the signal path circuit is incomplete or inadequate. The far end return to earth may be missing. Verify that there is a return to earth on the far end of the target conductor and then measure the signal path resistance again. Once a good signal path has been created and the correct frequency applied to the target, the next task is to detect the signal with the receiver. Turn the receiver on by pressing the power key. From the main locate screen, select cable pipe. The locate screen will appear on the receiver. Press the first yellow command key labeled frequency repeatedly until the transmitter frequency is displayed above this key. Press the OK key to return to the locating screen. To select the locating mode or antenna configuration of the receiver, press the second yellow command key labeled Mode. Repeatedly pressing this key will toggle the receiver between directional peak mode, directional null mode, and special peak mode. Most of your locating will be done in the directional peak mode. In directional peak mode, the receiver uses all four of its peak antennas to pinpoint the target path. 
The numerical signal strength in the middle of the locate screen indicates the actual strength of the transmitted signal that is reaching the receiver. The point at which this numerical signal is the highest value indicates the center of the electromagnetic field or the target conductor. The bar graph should open when the receiver is off target path and close when over the target path. If the bar graph is not responding to the target conductor, adjust the gain by pressing the gain adjust keys. In addition to the signal strength and the bar graph, the audio response of the unit will increase as you get closer to the target path. In directional peak mode, the receiver's middle crossbar detects the rise and fall of the electromagnetic field surrounding the target facility. This crossbar contains the antennas that operate the directional arrows. As the receiver approaches the electromagnetic field from the left of the target path, an arrow will appear on the locating screen pointing toward the right. It is detecting the rise of the electromagnetic field surrounding the target conductor. As the receiver crosses the path of the target conductor, the arrow pointing to the left will appear, indicating that the target has been passed. The crossbar is now detecting the fall of the electromagnetic field. The numerical signal level should be at its highest value, the bar graph should be almost closed, and both arrows displayed when locating a target with an undistorted electromagnetic field. See Advanced Application Techniques for information about measuring the symmetry of a locate signal. To verify the target path, measure the depth to the conductor. Place the tip of the receiver on the ground and press the yellow command key labeled Depth. The depth of the conductor will appear on the left-hand side of the screen. It should be the value that you are expecting to see when locating this particular utility. On the right-hand side of the screen, the relative current of the conductor will appear. If you are locating a single conductor using the direct connect method and are on target, this value should be very close to the relative current that is flashing on the transmitter. You can save this depth and current reading along with four others for future reference. Simply press the Save command key while in the depth screen. To return to the locate screen and continue marking the target path, press the OK key.